<laughs> so the quick thought that most people have is, okay, diabetes is a very, type two diabetes is a very serious issue, so what I'll do is I'll eat less sugar or I won't eat sugar. But they're saying, um, I'm a healthy person, I'm not gonna eat sugar, but I eat fish and that seems, you know, it's not sugar, I eat chicken, I eat egg whites, sometimes I have pretzels because that has white flour or I have some pasta. Um, these people in general believe they are not contributing to diabetes because they're not eating sugar and junk, but they are eating fish, one, chicken, two, egg whites, three, white flour, four, and, you know, and, and, and white and pasta, same thing. So on those four things, fish, one, chicken, two, egg white, three, and white flour, pretzels, or pasta, or cereal, for each of those four, is this really a big deal with diabetes? As long as we're not eating the sugar, does it really make that much of a difference if we eat fish, chicken, egg whites, or white flour? Each of those four. Do you want me to go first? Okay. It makes a huge difference. So what we know is that meat and fish and chicken all increase your rate of diabetes. Uh, they did a, 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 a particular study that was very, very good involved 12 different studies and it showed that people who eat meat, fish, chicken, I'm going to add dairy in there, have 35 to 50 percent more diabetes. So right off the bat we have that. The more recent research shows that animal fat in particular definitely increases your rate of diabetes and also is associated with destroying the beta cells of the pancreas. Fish fat in particular, in particular, actually kills the beta cells of the pancreas. So if you even have two helpings of fish a week, just two helpings, you will actually accelerate beta cell destruction. So the data is getting stronger and stronger that it makes a difference. A very interesting research done with Buddhists really makes the point. They took uh, vegan Buddhists and uh, meat-eating Buddhists. And they found that the women who were meat-eaters only had 3% of what American women have. And the vegan, the meat-eating men only had 8%. But that being said, when they compared the vegan to the women who were having only 3% of animal products, they had literally uh, double the rate of diabetes. Uh, actually quadruple the rate of diabetes. And the men, only eating 8% had double the rate of diabetes as compared to the vegan men. So it, even a very small percent actually makes a very significant difference. I kind of leave it like that. The rest would be an hour lecture. <laughs> so. Was that the 2014 study by Tina Chu from, uh, um, she had, uh, well, I, I think it must have been, yeah. um, but she saw 75% risk reduction in women and 51% risk reduction in men? No, in actually the Buddhist a different men. study. So it was a different study, okay. Yeah. So there's, okay, sorry. <laughs> Point being, there are lots of studies on these things. So even a little bit matters, that's the key. Well, uh, I think it's enough research proving for us that animal fat and protein uh, spikes insulin. And you need insulin for so many functions. You need it for your brain, you need it, for, uh, you need it so that you can absorb sugar into the cell. Your f energy source is glucose. But you know, if I don't get it from the right source, that's when donuts look good. When I get it from the green juice, and I get it from wheatgrass, and I get it from algae, blue-green algae, and spirulina, and uh, chlorella, and all that, then I don't have that need. So more or less, we all have to be ahead of ourselves because we are all sugar addicts, or we are recovering. <laughs> But that is, uh, that is the biggest problem. For example, if you're on whey protein, you know that that spikes your insulin about 30 to 50 times more than, 
than uh, sugar does. Imagine that. So it's sugar, yes, we got to be really careful. We don't eat any white sugar. We don't eat honey or maple syrup. But our natural sugar comes from the greens and the juices that we drink that actually don't have sugar from carrots and beets. We stay very, very green. And why we're so strict is because we're living in a time that we have abused sugar for a long time. It's been available in so many products. So we're in a time where we gotta be more careful. And the more you learn about what fructose does to us and how it feeds cancer, and cancer will take advantage uh, you know, from your diet, because it, it comes from food. But I wanna say, so many times I've seen people that have got to our diet and, and have shown amazing uh, improvement, and then they've had this big emotional stress, and symptoms and numbers came uh, rising all the way back. So, you know, learning how to uh, deal with life's events and stresses too is really, really important. The point I'd like to make, research is wonderful, I think it's just great, but you know, the most important thing that I can tell you is over uh, the nearly half a century that I've done my work, I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people reverse type 2 diabetes. Shame on you if you do not reverse type 2 diabetes. As a matter of fact, when people come through the program and they are diagnosed with that and their insulin is high, we see rapidly 50, 60 percent of those people within the three-week period come off or not need insulin. The most dangerous thing that we do at Hippocrates, our medical team has to watch these people like a hawk, is have them check with glucometers two, three, four times a day to make sure that the doctors there and then when they get home, the physicians reduce their insulin. Or if you continue to take insulin when you don't need it, you go into shock. So that's number one. And I can tell you 100% of everyone, so if I see them a year later and they say I'm still a diabetic, they're not doing what they should be doing. They're just not doing what they should be doing. This is a non-issue. This is a non-issue. And I'll give you a story. Uh, several years ago, we have a local fella in West Palm Beach that's a renowned diabetic expert. And he has people fly in from all over the world to see him because he's, he's renowned for putting people on insulin and watching them and making sure that they don't have as many episodes of blindness and, you know, exhuming their arms and legs and fingers and all the horrible things that have, heart attacks, etc. He probably minimizes it by a small percentage. So his patients kept saying, we've got to go to Hippocrates, we've got to go to Hippocrates because they'd meet people that came to us, applied the program, went home and healed diabetes. So reluctantly, he finally had to do it. He brought a whole load in, and we had a little tiny room, and we packed in 200 people, and it was one of those magical nights that I was ready to talk, and I would have done a good job, but not as good as what happened. There was a woman who just graduated the program the Friday before. This was a Tuesday. And she kept pulling my pants leg and saying, let me talk, let me talk. And I didn't know if she could talk or what she should say. So I said, okay, I'll give you five minutes. Well, I turned the entire night over to her. She spoke for 45 minutes, I spoke for 15 minutes. And she got up and she said, do you know, I was a diabetic for 28 years. I was full blast on insulin. My eyesight was going. I had neuropathy, I had pain in the bottom of my feet constantly, and I kept taking more drugs for that all of the time. And eight days after I came to Hippocrates, I was off insulin. By the second week, 14 days, I no longer had pain in my legs. And she got up and she did a little dance for about a minute there. And the people were just completely shocked, what they said. They actually thought I had paid an actress to come in and make that story up. And, of course, the people who understood Hippocrates in the group in the back were cheering and saying, this is wonderful. So after we left, I had to leave early and she left early, the doctor stood up and said, now remember, everything that you heard is anecdotal. There's no scientific research to back this. This is the problem we have today. We have institutionalized corruption going on. We're willing to let people have pain, suffering, die, have heart attacks, strokes, kidney disorders for profit. And that's what we're talking about here. It's no less or no more than that. Now, we can dice the words and try to be polite and try to be nice, but the bottom line is this is horrible. Horrible that people are suffering. Horrible that our children are suffering now. 
Type 2 diabetes are hitting 5 and 6 and 7 year old kids. It used to take 60 years of bad living. Now, in the womb, the poor child is getting fast food. When they get out, they're given what? Condensed milk or worse than that? You know, formulas? And what is that? The number one ingredient in the organic formula is sugar. Go out and look at the health store. It's junk food. The best one that's called organic, bogusly called organic, that will give you diabetes. And then to top it all off, the celiac disease we talk about. But when are we going to just wake up and do something about this stuff? We can sit around and dice words, play games, be polite, and act professional. I'm pissed off at this stuff. This should make you angry, everyone listening in the world should be angry, and you should go to your government officials and demand better. Because if we don't do this, this is going to wipe out and kill millions and millions and millions of people worldwide. No question. I, I want to add something because I, I shared in my first lecture my experience with a man named Carlos who was on 40 units of insulin and 17 uh, pills a day. Uh, had, of course, type 2 diabetes, peripheral artery disease. Uh, he had just had a major heart attack. His kidneys were failing. Uh, he had chronic gout. Uh, and he was told by his um, physician he had two years to live at most. He needed to get his affairs in order. And he was also told by his physician uh, that his diseases were progressive and irreversible. And there was nothing that he could do about it. And when Carlos started on a plant-based diet and got off all his insulin and all his medication, reversed all of his diseases, uh, he went back to that physician and he said to that physician, why did you not tell me this was possible? Um, you know, years ago, I suffered so much. And the doctor looked at him and said, Carlos, I'm sorry. I just didn't know it was possible. And he said, I, I honestly wouldn't have believed it if you would have told me it was possible. But he said, I've seen it and I know now. You have the power to move your physicians, your dietitians, simply by your example. And, and you need to have the courage to go in and share what is happening with your health with them. Because I think most of our physicians really do care and they want uh, to help. They want you to heal. They want you to get better. They just don't know any different. They don't learn about these things in medical school. But many of them will be open, and so we really need to not be afraid to share with them. You have to remember that you are the boss. And a lot of times you're intimidated by um, authorities to tell you what you can do and, and when you can. And, um, you know, so, so what happens, for example, Gabriel has seen it, we see it every day that when you take the step and you change lifestyle and you change your attitude about what's so important in the foods, because like, you know, for us now, I think for all of us, food is not so, food is our fuel so that we can do good things and be what we want and have the health that we want. But it's become this big gourmet things and, and there's shows on TV and this and that and we're all <laughs> like, oh my God. And, and it's, it's like as if God didn't make food perfect and we have to make it perfect, you know? 